Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When a person passes away leaving behind a lot of wealth, generally there are many problems that arise. In most homes where a lot of wealth is left, the heirs begin to fight and squabble. If you take a look at the Quran, the only detailed explanation of an act of worship is that of distribution of the estate of the deceased or the laws of inheritance. That is the only thing that Allah mentions in detail to the fraction. So there has to be a reason for it. Here's the reason. That wealth doesn't belong to you and doesn't belong to the deceased. It belongs to Allah. Allah gave it to the deceased prior to their death through whatever means he wished. Allah gave them through business deals, by giving them a brain, by putting them at the right place at the right time, by giving them something they might have earned it from their parents or whoever else they may have inherited it from. Or maybe Allah Almighty might have just granted them some form of a blessing. They got it from Allah. Allah says, when I give you something, remember when you came onto this earth, you came with nothing. When you leave, you're going to leave with nothing besides your deeds. So whatever you've amassed, you're going to leave it behind anyway because you didn't come with it in the first place. It's mine. I will tell you what to do with it while you have it and I will tell you what should happen with it after you've gone. That's Allah. That's Islam. If we acknowledge that Allah Almighty is the one who will decide how we will earn, how we will spend and what will happen to our wealth the day we leave, then we're true Muslims. So let's look at this. You can only earn through certain means and you're not allowed to earn through what is known as haram means. I'm not going to go into the detail of that today. But when we pass away, that wealth, Allah tells us, if you have the following categories of people, they will always inherit. A spouse, parents and children. They will always inherit. And if you have a father, from among your parents, like a father's alive, or you have a son who is alive, then you don't go beyond these relatives. It doesn't go further. The minute there's a father or a son, then you only go to parents, spouse, and children. Nobody else. Subhanallah. They are the ones most deserving of your wealth. But I don't get along with my father, but my son is like this, but that these are difficulties. You know what? You're going to need to navigate through them. You have to adopt the law of Allah, even if that wealth is lost to a degree. After your death, for as long as it went to the right hands, you have set yourself free. You might have a few million, but I can't have it with this one and that one. Yes, if you have a child who is perhaps an addict, of intoxicants or drugs, you might want to look into how you can help create a management of the money that will belong to him in the case of your death. Someone to manage it, to spend it on the right things and to avoid it being spent on intoxicants and so on. So you might want to create some form of a protective system and the wealth will go into that system in order to be spent on this particular person but it still has to go to that person if in your lifetime you've given gifts to your children that's theirs but you cannot connect it with your death to say if i die you take this and you do this and i don't want to give this one and that one these you have to give them if you don't have a father and you don't have a son then after your spouse gets whatever they get your daughters will get the bulk of what you've left behind. Either half or two thirds of what you've left behind goes to your daughters. Why? Because you don't have a son who's going to look after them or you don't have a father who's going to take care of their grandchildren. In Islam, that's how it should be. If you're the closest male, you should be looking after the females who are the closest to you in relation financially. Did you know that? Subhanallah, those are some amazing teachings that people have ignored in this world of materialism. May Allah Almighty protect us. So when you have a person 
within your family who's passed away and you are one of the heirs, you will need to deal with it at your earliest convenience. So even if you're not going to break up the business, but you need to know who owns what share from very early on. The quicker the better, as they say. The sooner the better. When you delay, it becomes sticky and ugly. Allah Almighty mentions every fraction because He wants to test you. Do you acknowledge it's from Allah? And do you acknowledge that this has to be distributed? No matter how much we love wealth, it has to be done fairly as per the instruction of Allah Almighty. So sometimes you have people who are very religious, but in the laws of inheritance, they failed. They've gone against verses of the Quran. One wonders what, what their connection is with Islam after that. They may argue, but remember to deny a portion of the Quran is extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous for a believer. So sometimes we fail in this. That's why we have this topic today dealing with difficulty regarding inheritance and the sharing of the estate. Don't be an obstacle. Let it be shared in a fair manner. Do not deprive your sisters. Many people, the sisters or the daughters or the mother or the, the wife or wives, they deprive them because they say, these are women, you know what? What will they understand about the valuation of this place and so on? No, Allah is watching, Allah knows. Would you like blessings? Would you like a decent, good life filled with contentment? If that's the case, give them their due. Give it to them. Allah is watching. You came with nothing. You're going to go with nothing. So just give it to them. What is stopping you from giving it to them? And don't delay and don't cheat them. Because many people, unfortunately, shamelessly, don't mind to say, no, no, no. My dad gave you during his lifetime, so you don't have a share of what is remaining now that he's died. That is against the Quran. Go and ask any scholar you want that if my father gave you during your lifetime, does that mean I no longer have a share if he dies and leaves behind something? The answer is you do have a share. If something is left behind and still belonged to your father when he died, then you need to know that. You have a share in it because you're an heir. So don't delay. My beloved brothers and sisters, from this beautiful episode, what, what we want to achieve is to understand the importance of the laws of inheritance, the readiness to fulfill them without question or doubt, without fear or favor, and to do so as soon as possible. Now, if there is a business that's running a multi-million dollar business, what should I do because I don't have the money to actually pay the people out? In that case, you can build a company or you can make the people proportionate shareholders of the company and they will share the profit. They will share the profit for as long as it takes to sell their part of the business and they may not want to sell it. So say, for example, we have 25%, 25% and 50%. So there's a boy and two girls. What would happen is, if we needed to keep it that way, these girls will continue to get their portion of the business, even though, or of the profit, even though they may not be directly involved in that business, but it belongs to them. Bear this in mind, because some people delay and they take five years to resolve the matter. And in that five years, someone gained. Who gained? Whoever gained, that gain was supposed to be distributed amongst the heirs. Be fair. Allah has taught us in Surah to Nisa, the Surah that speaks about women. Allah has taught us in that Surah the importance of distributing the estate fairly, correctly, without delay, in a manner that is going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will earn your paradise when you let go. Let things happen the way Allah has ordained. Don't attach to what is not yours in the law of Allah, no matter what. Like I said earlier, you might have to lose something. For as long as you set yourself free, Alhamdulillah, it's okay if I lost. Imagine if someone told you, if you lose this million, you earn Jannah. You might lose this money, but you'll earn paradise. I tell them, take the million, let's go to Jannah. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us all paradise. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala Muhammad. Mm -hmm.